few games out there have been able to willingly eat away as much of my free time as one step from Eden. From the gameplay to the music and visuals, it's all a real treat to behold. It's got an arcade style, where there's not much story going on and instead focuses fully on immersing the player in its combat. After choosing a character, you're thrust onto an 8x4 grid that serves as the arena for each encounter. I've seen a lot of people compare the game to Mega Man Battle Network, but I think One Step From Eden does just enough to stand out on its own. Battle Network games can be very grindy, they're RPGs by nature, so a lot of the strategy in them comes down to spending hours collecting chips and abilities that combo together. While Eden's spell system is similar in design, the roguelike nature of the game makes it impossible to build up a permanent collection of abilities and combos. Every run starts with a blank slate, and the only thing that carries over when you die is whatever knowledge you obtained about how enemies move or attack. In that sense, doing well in One Step from Eden is more reliant on pattern memorization and dodging than it is on trying to stockpile spells. Each run can be different from the previous one. The game encourages subsequent playthroughs, though. It has a somewhat lengthy level system that gives out incremental rewards every time you play. The first few trips through Eden will be the roughest, as you'll have very few characters, abilities, or artifacts, but the speed at which things are unlocked happens rather quickly. It's like an ever-flowing torrent of rewards. Characters are unlocked by facing them after a certain difficulty threshold. Costumes are obtained by meeting certain achievement goals, and extra builds can be unlocked through a similar fashion. So even if you get all 44 levels of ability and artifact unlocks the game has, there's always something more to do or another goal you can set. A full run only takes around 30 to 40 minutes, and there's rarely any downtime in a single playthrough. Every playable character has a unique base weapon and item that helps them stand apart from each other. Their base kit also pushes the player to build them in a certain way. For example, Saffron has a pea shooter but comes with really high health and a free revive. Celesty is a melee attack that gets damage bonuses off hitting frozen enemies. Gunner has a unique weapon that can be upgraded into other types of guns. Shiso gains damage increased on the amount of money you have. And Violette is a jumpy anime girl for masochists. Each battle the player wins awards various things, like new spells, money, and experience. When a character levels up, they're awarded a choice of a new artifact to add to their collection and gain another passive buff. Ideally, you want early game artifacts to help shape your build, and for the late game artifacts to enhance what you've already invested in. An example of an early game choice would be you're on a character that doesn't gain benefits from using Frost, but you're given a bunch of frost theme artifacts. So now you have to pick if you want to stick with their standard build path, or build into the artifacts that the game has dealt you. The challenges this system presents can oftentimes result in discovering combos or setups you might not have considered otherwise. There's some control over what spells you're granted, but not a lot. You can set a preference in between matches to prioritize spells from a certain typing, but it's still luck of the draw if they actually show up. Most characters' base kits are strong enough to carry them without adding in more cards, and you can simply buy upgrades from the occasional shopkeeper instead of dumping your cash for more firepower. More spells means more options, but it also means you might have to wait longer in your spell queue to get the thing you need. You don't get to pick and choose the order your spells show up, so piling on too many deadweight options can make the game harder. You can't get duplicates either, so every spell is a one of unique option. It's good to have some variety in a deck, since certain situations can't be handled with your base kit, but too many options will slow down the game's pace and make things harder. Sometimes less is more. Another reason to not always OD on cards is mana. Mana is the resource pool that spells and even some characters' default weapons pull from, and it has a pretty lengthy recharge timer. You can choose to stock up on the occasional mana regeneration artifact, but having too many high-cost spells can slow down how quickly you take out enemies, which once again, makes it easier to lose your footing and die. Speaking of death, One Step From Eden is an incredibly punishing game. Healing isn't really much of a thing. The few healing spells in the game are often gated behind other dubious effects, are once per battle actions, or give a meager amount of HP back. The only sizable heals come from artifacts that often mean giving up something better, or dedicated heal spaces that eat a turn without giving you other rewards. I quickly found that most of my runs were better off when I stopped relying on healing since it gave me more options overall. Enemy difficulty is a combination of health, damage, and attack area increases. It's very easy to get boxed in the farther into a run you get. Some of the late game forms of the boss characters start to feel more like bullet hell matches. Their attacks become layered, and if you lose track of the flashing warning symbols on screen, it's easy to get run over by otherwise dodgeable attacks. 
Maybe the warning marks could be color-coded for layered attacks, or maybe I could just stop being a baby, but I wish there was a little more clarity in later levels. I feel like I'd be reaching Eden a lot more consistently. Clarity is the game's biggest issue. Spells in your queue have no indication for what they do outside of a picture, the range indicator doesn't adjust itself for spells that operate outside the norm, and the only way to see what something does before you grab it is by looking at a preview window on pickup. While you will eventually get the hang of certain spells and abilities, I can imagine the lack of a decent guide being off-putting for spells that ricochet or twist around the grid rather than fire in a straight line. Outside of this gripe, the game's visuals are pretty charming. There's a lot of love and care put into the playable cast in their alternate outfits, with most of them completely changing the animation of how the character works. Enemies sometimes feel a little lazy though. For instance, when you reach the harder difficulty spikes, the reskins on some of the creatures look more like what would happen if you threw a box of crayons in a blender. Overall though, One Step from Eden is a very fun and addictive game. A single run is short enough that they can be completed in a longer commute or break period. The escalations of rewards is very enticing, and even after you've exhausted the level up rewards, there's enough extra builds and costumes to unlock that repeated playthroughs can still serve a purpose. Its difficulty and learning curve might be off-putting to a more impatient player when you finally do reach Eden, and you conquer that last area. It feels very, very good.